Hey guys, my name is Micah Watson and I'm a composer and music producer and I'm teaching you through the Ableton Live manual one chapter at a time and today I'm going to be talking about key mapping which is over here and with key mapping you're able to map different things on your actual computer keyboard your QWERTY keyboard to different parameters in Ableton Live so this is the end result I'll be using the APC40 demo project, which you get with Ableton Live, so that you guys can do this exactly like I am. If you don't have this demo, it's probably because you don't have Live Suite. But if you want some kind of a mock-up project file, I can do that for you. If you look in the description, you can sign up, and every now and again I send random things like this to you guys. Alright, so let's start with the mapping. So, I'm in Ableton Live, and you move your mouse to this key and you push it, and... Um, it's different to MIDI in that we're not actually assigning any values to MIDI controllers, we're assigning it to our keyboard. So that is the big difference here. And what I want to do is, first of all, I want to assign some of these clips, or well, these clip slots rather, not the actual clips, to buttons. So I'm just going to push on that, and I'm going to make that Q. And now when I push Q, it's going to trigger base A. Boog there, I'm going to push A, Z. And I'm just going down my keyboard and, oh, oopsie, that's weird assigning a different character to a different slot. So now I've selected a character that I've already used and it tells me that it's conflicting with the previous mapping. So I can either replace the previous mapping or I can go no because that was a mistake. Okay, so on the left here you can see key A is the space slot to this space refers not to the instrument but the track. So just bear that in mind, this is the track name and this is the slot number. These minimum and maximum values only apply to things like faders. If I were to assign this fader to something on my keyboard, I wish I could assign it to my trackpad, but I can't. But what I can do is I can just use my up and down arrows or left and right arrows to move the faders. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Okay, so I've already got play and stop a space bar, that's just kind of your general mapping, so I don't want to mess with that. And what I can do is I want to map this tap to a P, so I can tap in a tempo using P. Let's map that fader, the panning, I've mapped it to a quotation mark. And I'm done for now, so I'm just going to push this key again and start jamming. Before I do that, there's just a couple things that I want you to be aware of with keyboard assignments. So by using keyboard assignments, three things could happen as a result. Clips in session view slots will be affected by mapped keys according to their launch mode settings. So if you double click on a click over here and you push this little L, you get your launch modes. And um, these launch modes will determine the trigger behavior of your clip. So for more on launch modes, you can check out this video, which goes into detail about that. Also, keys assigned to switches will toggle switch states. So for instance, as an example, I'm going to push key over here and I'm going to assign this bypass button on my reverb to I on my keyboard. I is used, I'm going to change that to a zero. So now when I push zero, it can either switch on or off the device depending on whether it's on or off already. So it's toggling between the states and keys assigned to radio buttons will toggle through the available options. So if I go to this clip and I go to key mode and I want to change this global quantization, let's go make it nine. Then if I push 9, as you can see on this quantization, it's just toggling through all the different options. Okay, so please do not confuse this remote control functionality with Live's ability to use the computer keyboard as a pseudo MIDI keyboard, which is what you can do when you highlight this little button, enabling your computer MIDI keyboard to play as like a piano or something. When you do that, your computer keyboard can generate MIDI notes from computer keystrokes inside instruments. But now I am deciding to use my keyboard for triggering functions instead. Another thing I actually want to map out that I didn't think of is I want to map out my different scenes. So I'm going to push there and I'm going to make that P, L. So now I can even map the whole scene to different buttons. Let's go.
So that's how you use your computer keyboard like you would a push to trigger different clips and scenes in Ableton Live. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something new. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and I'll get back to you. And as always, have fun learning and I will see you soon.